Yo, what's up guys, Jeff is here. So here's a Witcher 3 graphics tweak guide, explaining all the graphics settings to increase your performance and to make sure your game still looks amazing. You don't need to set everything to ultra in order to make the game look beautiful. Before you start, make sure to update to the latest Nvidia drivers. Now let's start with the graphical settings. The game has VSync on by default, so turn VSync off and set the maximum frames to unlimited. Set the resolution to your native resolution. Set the display mode to your preference. Borderless allows you to alt tab to your desktop much faster. Nvidia Hairworks will have a large impact on your frame rate, so make sure to turn this off. The number of background characters limits the numbers of NPCs on your screen. Low limits it to 75, so I guess you will never see more than 75 characters on screen at once. So I just set it to low for now. Setting shadow quality to medium should save you around 5 to 10 fps without compromising on the graphics. Terrain quality is intended to increase the geometric detail of terrain surfaces through tessellation, but this is not working right now according to the GeForce page on the Witcher 3, so I just set it to low for now. Set the water quality to high as the performance cost is only 1 or 2 fps. The grass density is the amount of grass on the ground. Set this as high as you want because you will only lose about one frame. If you have a 2 gig graphics card, I recommend medium or high textures. And if you have a 4 gig video memory, you can set it to ultra without a problem. The foliage visibility range determines how far you can see foliage and trees. Setting it to low increases my performance a lot and frame rate is much more stable. The detail level affects the visibility of blood spatter and other effects that are typically generated during combat. If you want to gain a few extra frames during huge fights, set this setting to low. Turning the hardware cursor on disables the mouse acceleration, which is what you want, so make sure to turn this on. Now let's go to the post-processing options. I can't really tell the difference in performance with motion blur on or off, but I always have not turned off anyways. I would recommend to turn off anti-aliasing, as this will gain you about 6 to 7 fps. Bloom will add a nice effect on bright lights. I recommend you turn this on, as this will only cost you about 1 frame. Sharpening will make the picture sharper, but has no real impact on performance. Ambient occlusion will add more natural shadows, but always has a huge performance cost. I recommend you turn this off. The depth of field has a little effect on your frame rates. Some people want this option on, but I, but I prefer to have depth of field off, because I don't like a blur on the background. Chromatic aberration should make the edges of your screen all blurry and chromatically messed up. Good thing you can turn this off now. Vignetting darkens the screen and has no impact on frame rates. I have this option turned off. Light shafts provide be beautiful sunlight effects. You should really have this on, as this will only cost about half a frame. My FPS ranges from 40 to 55 with these settings. <laughs>
Not bad. Not bad. <laughs> 